message. Our text will be taken from the book of Hebrews, chapter 4, and I'm going to start to read from verse 1. God's promise of entering his rest still stands, so we ought to tremble with fear that some of you might fail to experience it. For this good news that God has prepared this rest has been announced to us just as it was to them. But did them no good because they didn't share the faith of those who listened to God. For only we who believe can enter his rest. As for the others, God said, In my anger I took an oath that they would never enter my place of rest. Even though this rest has been ready since he made the world. We know it is ready because of the place in the scripture where it mentions the seventh day. On the seventh day, of day, God rested from all his work. But in the other passage, God said, they will never enter my place of rest. So God's rest is there for people to enter. But those who first heard this good news failed to enter because they disobeyed God. So God set another time for entering his rest. And that time is today. God announced this through David much later in the words already quoted. Today, when you hear his voice, don't harden your hearts. Now, if Joshua had succeeded in giving them this rest, God would, have not, have, would not have spoken about another day of rest till, still to come. So there's a special rest still waiting for the people of God. For all who have entered into God's rest have rested from their labors, just as God did after creating the world. So let us do our best to enter that rest. But if we disobey God, as the people of Israel did, we will fail, we will fall. For the word of God is alive and powerful, it's sharper than the sharpest two-edged sword, cutting between soul and spirit, between joint and marrow. It exposes our innermost thoughts and desires. Nothing in all creature is hidden from God. Everything is naked and exposed before his eyes, and is the one to whom we are accountable. Praise God. So that's the word of God. So this morning, as I said, we are talking about um, the um, us entering to, not being able to enter into God's rest because of our unbelief. And God said that uh, the good news had been announced to all. So all of us had had the good news. The good news that Jesus Christ has paid the price for us, our sins and has um, paid to redeem us from death for our sins. And But as it was said in this scripture in verse 2, it says that because they didn't, sh um, but it did, them no good because they didn't share the faith of those who listened to God. So not everybody who heard the good news listened. And more than, more than anything, not everyone that heard the good news believed. And God said in verse 3 here, for only we who believe can enter his rests. Interesting. So if you don't believe God, that he sent his son to die for your sins, our sins, then it's obvious that you cannot enter into eternal rest. You will enter into eternal damnation. But this scripture, unfortunately, is not even limited to eternal rest here. It is just a principle of God that if you don't believe in him or his promises or what he said he's going to do, or you don't have faith in him, you cannot enter into his rest. He said that for uh, only those who believe can enter his rest. And for the others, God said, those who do not believe, this is what God said, in my anger, I took an oath. They will never enter my place of rest. Even though this rest has been ready since he made the world. So from the beginning, God had made a place of rest for those that believe in him. And that is why even God himself, after walking for seven days, rested. And this same oath is what he swore against the people of um, Israel when he asked them to go and possess the land, and they didn't go ahead to possess it. In, um, in Numbers, the book of Numbers, if you can turn with me, to the book of Numbers chapter 14, we would read about this particular story about the Israelites. Numbers chapter 14. I'm going to read from verse 20 to 24. Numbers 14, 
from verse 20 to 24. Let's listen to that. Then the Lord said, I will pardon them as you've requested, but as surely as I live, and as surely as the earth is filled with the Lord's glory, not one of these people will ever enter that land. They have all seen my glorious presence and the miracles signs I've performed both in Egypt and in the wilderness. But again and again, they have tested me by refusing to listen to my voice. They will never even see the land I swore to give their ancestors. None of those who have treated me with contempt will ever see it. But my servant Caleb has a different attitude than the others have. He has remained loyal to me, so I'll bring him to the land he, he, he explored. His descendants will possess their full share of that land. So, what happened here? When Jesus, when God said they should go and have a look at the land, and they went, they came back with a bad report, saying that the land was full of giants, and they were too strong for the giants, and, and the giants were too strong for them, and they were like grasshoppers in the presence of the of the giants. And but Caleb said no, that they were able to go and take the land. But what angered God is the fact that they did not believe in him. They did not trust him. What, how do we know that? Because in that um, um, in verse 22 it says, not one of these people will ever enter the land. They have all seen my glorious presence and the remarkable sight I performed both in Egypt and in the wilderness. But again and again they have tested me, refusing to listen to my voice. So what, what angered God here is that, look, you people have seen all the miracles I've done. I brought you out of Egypt with a strong hand. I did all sorts of miracles in Egypt. I, um, Psalm 78 talks much more about it. I um, um, parted the Red Sea. I um, infl inflicted the children of, um, of Egypt with a plague, plague and everything. He did all these things. You saw all, him do all these things, but still you don't trust him. So if he has done all these mighty things, what is it for you to go and, co um, go and conquer the land? There's nothing. You are talking about giants in the land. He's talking, he's, he has delivered you from the hand of Pharaoh. You're talking about giants. And this angered God. And God said what? They will not enter into their promised land. The land that he has promised them, they will not enter into it. So if you um, look at this whole story, you'll find out that God is angered not because of their sin that we maybe look at. You know, the other things that we talk about, maybe adultery, stealing, or whatever. But the what angered him was they didn't even trust him. Their trust was not in him. They didn't believe in him. They had no faith in God. And that's one of the things that angers God. Let's go on to see what um, uh, we can learn from this story. Because God also obviously had prepared a place of rest, as he said. And one of the things he said is that Caleb, he said, what did he mention about Caleb? Let's look at what he said about Caleb here. He said, but my servant Caleb has a different attitude than others have. He has remained loyal to me, so I'll bring him to the land he explored. His desires will possess the full share of that land. Caleb was, Caleb was very different from all the others. Caleb, in his own case, trusted God. He believed God. That's why God said he was loyal. He trusted in God. He, you know, he was ready to hitch his horse with God, whatever the circumstances. He trusted God that God was able to take him to the promised land. Truly, God said, okay, you, Caleb, I promise that I'm going to take you there. And he ended up taking him there. It's this, if you go through scriptures, including the fact that God says that the righteous will live by faith and not by sight. It is God's um, instructions to us as Christians that we should live by faith. And that faith includes trusting in him as our father. He says in James if you talk with me to the book of James also, James 1. The book of James 1, let's see what he says again in this same area of trusting him and believing in him. I'll read from verse 2. Dear brothers and sisters, when troubles of any kind come your way, consider it an opportunity for great joy. For you know that when your faith is tested, your endurance has a chance to grow, so let it grow. For when your endurance is fully developed, you'll, perfect, you'll be perfect and complete, needing nothing. If you need wisdom, ask our generous God, and he'll give it to you. He will not rebuke you for asking. But when you ask him, be sure, be sure that your faith is in God alone. Do not waver. For a person with divided loyalty 
is as unsettled as a wave of the sea that is blown and tossed by the wind. Such people should not expect to receive anything from the Lord. So this is another occasion. He said, when we are, um, when we are facing tribulations and trials, that we should have faith in God. This is an opportunity for us to show that our faith is in God. You know? Actually, it even says in verse 3 that, for you know that when your faith is tested, your dearest has a chance to grow. So, if you're going to do hard times, if you're going to trials and tribulations, the truth is that God is just trusting your faith. Do you really trust Him? Despite all that's happening, the question is, do you really trust God? And He said that it is an opportunity for, for you to grow. Actually, for me, it's also, it says that it's an, also an opportunity for you to grow your faith. To that, know that when you trust God in this, this time, it would help you when you have challenges the other time. That is why God was angry with the children of Israel. Because yes, you have had challenges before, but I saw you through. That's what God is saying. But only Caleb understood that. That, okay, we've had challenges before. God saw us through that. He's able to see us through these challenges. And he said in this scripture, in emphasizing that God is not pleased when we are, not, when we are double-minded. In short, when we are not sure whether to trust in God or not, he's not pleased. He said, if anybody is double-minded, he should not expect to receive from the Lord. So, if you are double-minded, you can't really expect to get God's promise fulfilled in your life. Because God, obviously, wants to use your faith. He's the faith that God wants to use. You're trusting Him. You're believing Him that he wants to use to do these things in your life. But when you don't, he just says, he's not pleased. So, and if you continue reading that um, scripture, in, the scripture in November's, sorry, the scripture in Hebrews, Hebrews 4, just turn to Hebrews 4 again. Hebrews 4. The scripture in Hebrews 4. He says now in verse 5. So God's rest is there for people to enter. But the, those that first heard this good news failed to enter because, of, because they disobeyed God. So God set another time for entering his rest. And that time is today. So God, that same rest that people failed to enter at that time, God has opened an opportunity for us to enter into that rest now. And this same rest, he said, in verse um, 8, Now if Joshua succeeded in giving them this rest, God would not have spoken about another day of rest still to come. So there's a special rest still waiting for the people of God. For all who have entered into God's rest have rested from their labors, just as God did after creating the world. So let me explain that. He said, if you have entered into God's rest, you have, entered, you, have, you have rested from your labor. What does it say? When you are entering into God's rest, it means that you are trusting in God. You have let things rest in God. You understand what I mean? Joshua, deci um, Caleb decided to let his faith, his, he let the situation rest in God. He handed it over to God and he rested. He was clear that, oh, once I trust in God, I'm sure that God will sort it out. But the other ones were looking at their own strength. They said, oh, we are like grasshoppers in the eyes of um, the, um, the, the giants. You see the difference between the two? So, in short, one set of people believed in their own strength and in their own works. The other set of people, um, the other person believed in God's strength and God's work. That once I hand it over to God, I can rest in God. And... That's what the scripture confirms. He said, for all who have entered into God's rest have rested from their labors, just as God did create after the creating of the world. So let us do our best to enter that rest. So let's do our best to enter that rest. How do we have entered that rest? It's clear. It is by our faith, our believing in God. We will enter that rest by trusting God, handing things over to God, believing in his promises. <coughs> and then, the, um, it, it, it's um, Hebrews 11, 
verse 6 that says, without faith it's impossible to please God. So if all your trust is in your works, what you can do yourself and whatever, and your own strength, then God cannot be pleased with you. But if your faith is in what God has done and what God is able to do for you, then obviously it says that you are trusting him and you believe in him. And he will give you rest from those areas that you are being troubled. He will give you rest by bringing your promises into the pro his promises into fulfillment in your life. This has got nothing to do with what the situation or the circumstances show. If we are looking at the circumstances or our situations to enter into God's rest, you understand? The truth is that we wouldn't. Because we now look at a way of using this thing about we rest from our labor, which means that we will now look away from walking our way to solve the situation by ourselves. In our own strength, not trusting in God. That's how the Israelites looked at this and uh, uh, the um, giants in the land that they were going to possess. The, uh, we cannot defeat them. They are stronger than us. That was the, what the Israelites said. If we go a little bit further, let's go to the book of Hebrews chapter 11 also. Hebrews chapter 11. Here they're talking about um, um, Abraham. Let me read from verse 8. It was by faith that Abraham obeyed God when God called him to leave home and go to another land that God would give him as, in, as his inheritance. He went without knowing where he was going. And when he even reached the land God had promised him, he lived there by faith. For it was like a foreigner living in tents. And so did Isaac and Jacob who inherited the same promises. Promises. Abraham was confidently looking forward to a city with eternal foundations, a city designed and built by God. So Abraham left a place that maybe was more comfortable, more um, aware of the environment, he understood the culture, and went to a place that God said he should go to. But he did it, why? Because he trusted in God. He believed in God. He believed that God was taking him to a place where he had built for him himself. Yes, I mean. And Abraham, in doing that, the Bible goes on to say that in verse 11, it was by faith that even Sarah was able to have a child, though she was barren, was too old. She believed that God would keep his promise. And so a whole nation came from this one man, who was, good as, who was as good as dead, a nation with so many people like, that, like the stars in the sky and the sand on the seashore, there was no need to count them, no way to count them. All these people... All these, all these people still believe, died still believing what God had promised them. They did not receive what was promised, but they saw it all from a distance and welcomed it. They agreed that they were foreigners and nomads, and nomads here on earth. So, furthermore, Sarah, who was barren, she was 90. She hadn't got a child, but she believed God. She trusted God. Abraham, who was dead, he was close to 100. He believed that God would give him a child. He trusted in God. Despite the situation, they were barren. He was old. They didn't look at the circumstances. They just believed in God, that God has said they would give them a child. And they believed in it. And more than that, it tells us that it's not only them that believed, that so many other people believed. A nation came out of the belief of, um, of um, Abraham. And they did not receive all the promises. But what did they see? They saw all of it from a distance. And they agreed that there were foreigners and nomads here and there. Obviously, people who say such things are looking forward to a country they can call their own. If they longed for the country they came from, they could have gone back. But they were looking for a better place, a heavenly homeland. That is why God is not ashamed to be called their God, for he has prepared a city for them. So this also tells us the same thing. That they were not looking, their, their, their anticipation, their trust in God was not only for this earth. You understand? Know I mean? It was for more than this earth, for a future, a city that God has built, a city in the 
future. And you know what? They actually look forward to it. If we come back to where we are now, I'm not sure that a lot of us, even believers, look forward to the city built by God. Our focus and our concentration is so much on what is happening now, what is happening today. We are, we, our focus is so much on earth here. We are not looking forward to that city that God built, that city where we'll get rest, where God's rest, final rest would be. But this message is to take us back to the place where we look to God for rest. This is not a rest we are looking for from church to church. You know, so many of us, I, I, I think when I listen to stories of Christians around in Nigeria, I just realize that I'm not sure that people are trusting in God anymore. They are trusting in the man of God. They are trusting in the church. They are trusting in the prophet. They are trusting in where they are going. So it doesn't matter today they will be here, tomorrow will be there. They will go anywhere where they feel there can be a solution to their problem. Even sometimes, I doubt if they are even careful to know whether it is God that is solution to the problem. But God has said that if we do not believe, we will not be able to enter into his rest.